Chapter 8 The Silver Coin Jack caught his breath. Emperor Aurelius was their guy. He couldn't believe it. No, not lost, said Annie, smiling. We were just in the wrong place at the wrong time. The armory, explained Jack. So I hear, said the emperor. When I first met you, I thought you must live nearby, in Carnuntum. But now, I do not think that is so. Where is your home? Frog Creek, Pennsylvania, said Annie. Beyond the Danube, said Jack. Where are your horses, the emperor asked. We left them, uh, on the other side of the river, said Jack. Yes, we walked across the ice, said Annie. But we're definitely not invaders or spies, said Jack quickly. I promise, we wanted to learn about the Roman legion just for our own sake. I believe you, said the emperor. When I spoke with you on my ride, I knew you were honest and trustworthy. Do you ride every morning alone? asked Annie. When I can, said the emperor. I like to look closely at the world around me and think my own thoughts. We like to look at the world too, said Annie, and write down our thoughts. And facts, added Jack. We tried to do that today when we wrote in our journals, said Annie. Ah, yes, and what did you write? asked the emperor. I wrote about the weather, said Annie. I made notes about the Roman gods. I even wrote a poem about two of them. Really, I should very much like to hear it, said the emperor. Sure, said Annie. She quoted from memory. The weapons of Mars are heavy to bear, but the piece of Pax is lighter than air. The emperor nodded. Lovely, he said. He looked at Jack. I wrote about the flag and the warrior's training, said Jack, and I wrote about making bread and swords. Tell him what you wrote about having a heart attack, Annie said, smiling. Oh, I was a little nervous, said Jack, and I wanted to make my sister laugh. The emperor nodded. So you both write honestly with poetry and humor, and you study the world closely. We try, said Annie. Those are useful and honorable qualities, said the emperor. You are simple, brave, and honest. With training, you could be excellent warriors. Not me, said Annie. I don't like to fight. Sometimes one must fight for the right things, said the emperor. Like what, said Jack. Freedom and justice, said the emperor. Truth. Are you ever scared, asked Jack. Ah, yes, said the emperor. But if I look deep within myself, I often find a hidden source of strength. That makes sense, said Annie. If I pretend to be a very brave person, I suddenly find that I am one, said the emperor. That makes sense too, said Jack. I felt brave for a moment when I put on a warrior armor. In life we wear many disguises, said the emperor. I sometimes feel I wear the disguise of a powerful emperor. Annie gasped. Disguise, she whispered to Jack. Hero in disguise, silver coin. Oh, man, yes, breathed Jack. He took out the black coin. We want to give this to you, he said, handing the coin to the emperor. We think it's made of silver, said Annie. The emperor looked at the coin. He crossed to a table with jars and poured some liquid onto a cloth. Then he rubbed the coin, polishing it. Soon the silver shone brightly. The emperor held the coin close to a lantern and studied it. He turned to Jack and Annie with a look of amazement. Where did you get this? he asked. Uh, we found it in some woods, said Annie. Why, is there something wrong with it? said Jack. This coin is in honor of me, said the emperor. Its engraving shows me with my warriors on a frozen river. It looks as if we had a great victory on the Danube. You don't remember? said Jack, confused. I do not said the emperor in a hushed voice. Because this battle has not ha yet happened. Look at the date. He handed the coin to Jack. Jack and Annie studied the Roman numerals. It says 173, said Jack. Indeed it does, said the emperor. We are now in the year of 172. Oh, said Annie. Well, that doesn't make sense. No, unless... The emperor looked at Jack and Annie with his golden eagle gaze. It is a coin from the future, 